Welcome back lovely sisters. I'm very excited to do this video because I am using my brand new camera for the first time. It's just so amazing to be able to give you this amazing video quality and crispness. So let's jump into the video. I want to ask you a question. Do you believe your husband is smarter than you? If you believe he is smarter than you, you will reverence him, you will adore him, you will admire him and you will find it very easy to submit to him. But if you think you are smarter than he is, you're going to struggle with all those things and you will struggle to obey scripture. Now the interesting thing about this is the way you view your husband will reflect the way you view God. And I don't mean this in a blasphemous way at all, but submission to our husbands is intrinsically connected to how much we trust God. If we trust God fully, we will be able to trust His Word fully, which is the scripture, and wholeheartedly surrender to His command. Let us look at how what we think about our husbands and how we view them in terms of intellect is going to affect how we submit to them and whether we struggle to do so. In this video, we're going to see how our relationship with God is directly connected to our relationship with our husbands. And I'm going to show you how you can find your way back to true womanhood and how God designed us to relate to our husbands in a truly reverent way, in a way that is going to come naturally to you once you understand what it means to be supportive and what it means to really respect your husband's intellect. Not because you must, but because you genuinely see how he is gifted with God by God's wisdom and by a certain authority vested on him from above. I know we've gone over this one many times, but Ephesians 5 is full of little nuggets of truth that shows how marriage is a picture of the bride of Christ. You know, how Jesus is towards us, what he has done for us, how the church must relate to him in the light of these things. For the husband is the head of his wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Do you see? Therefore, why must we submit? Because we represent the church. It goes on to say, husbands love your wives. That bit is for husbands, so we'll skip on ahead. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So it is very clear. We represent the bride of Christ. And I had a very interesting epiphany uh, um, last week about how the bride relates to Christ. And then therefore how it reflects on us as wives and what we must do as wives for our husbands. I was thinking about the dysfunction between Christ and the bride. You know, the bridegroom being this glorified king in heaven and we are these miserable creatures here on earth still stuck in our carnal bodies still having all these struggles not having the wisdom and the understanding that christ has in heaven and he himself knowing the the complete picture and the complete plan for the body of christ and yet here we are stuck on earth we know that he has promised us many good things but we just have to believe it we don't understand it all we don't have full comprehension, but we have to believe it. Isn't this what a wife is called to do? She does not always understand the full meaning of what her husband is doing. She doesn't understand why he is doing it in this particular way. Some of it might seem like lunacy to her, or it might seem like the opposite of the right thing to do. So it is with the Lord. There are many things when we read in scripture, we are surprised. Oh, but why did God do it like that? Or why did he say that? Or why has he planned everything out in this particular way? Why didn't he just do it like this? You know, this is us thinking in our simplistic, uneducated, unknowledgeable, carnal minds, not knowing the ways of God and his understanding. Once again, this is not blasphemous. The Bible has told us the husband represents Christ, the wife represents the bride. 
the husband's ways and his ways of thinking are not the same as his wife. The way he would do it is not the same as the way his wife would do it. So, let me just get this off the, off the table. I am not saying the husband is pure and that the wife is a sinner. Both husband and wife are fallen. But the archetype is the same in the fact that men think differently to women. That is where God has placed the difference. He intentionally made it like that so that we could see a picture of how the bride is not the same being as the bridegroom for now. There's this tension between the bride and the bridegroom. So there is this tension in your marriage because you don't understand your husband's way of thinking. It will always be like that. And it is the wife's job to pursue this understanding of how her husband thinks, the reasoning and the way he thinks, to make that her life's goal, to align herself with his purposes, even if she doesn't understand. That is what real submission is. Now to illustrate this, I want to read to you from Isaiah 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So how do we apply this holy picture, this holy picture of God who is so otherworldly, who has this transcendent wisdom that we cannot grasp? We can get glimpses of it and even that is a bit too much for us. But how do we apply this to our roles as wives? Because our husbands are fallen and they make mistakes and they're just like us, you know? We need to walk with the understanding that as a man, he thinks differently and will do things differently to the way a woman will do it. And the reason for this is because men have different priorities. Women will tend to focus on nurturing things. We will focus on making things better for everybody. We will focus on making life more comfortable and generally not have a far-reaching, broad vision that involves a lot of risk. Men, on the other hand, think big, and that, that almost always involves risk. Men are not risk-averse, so they are not afraid of risk as much as women are. This very essential difference between men and women makes for a lot of misunderstanding between us. If we put on meekness as women, that is why the Bible calls us to meekness, is because we need to submit to the way of the man and the way he thinks. If he is your husband, not just any man, your husband, you will become part of something bigger than just your home, just your comfort drives, just your desire to nurture, you'll become part of something bigger. And within that, you will be performing your priorities. You will still be performing your priorities, which are in your womanly role. At the same time, you're channeling it into your husband's bigger overarching priorities. Of course, he will make mistakes, but it's not up to you to correct it. Then you are usurping authority over him. You have to remember you are also making mistakes all the time. That is where the humility comes in and the meekness. If you trust God, you will have no need to step up and point out the mistakes your husband makes. So let me ask you again, is your husband more intelligent than you? Do you admire his intellect. This is very important. If you don't, I'm going to give you some tips towards the end of the video on how you can cultivate a new understanding, a new way of thinking about your husband so that you can naturally admire him. Let's talk about blasphemy. That's a very heavy word. Why are we talking about blasphemy? Because it applies to wives very directly. There's a scripture specifically addressing women. Blasphemy is to speak irreverently about God or sacred things. And we might instantly feel, oh no, I would never do that. I've never done that before. Think again. I'm going to go through some steps and things that women do that blasphemes the word of God. These are instructions to the old men and the old women how they should behave themselves. That they be in behavior as becometh holiness not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, 
to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. A lot of us skip over that end bit, but it is it should cause us to pause and consider if we are not in accordance with those stipulations in the scripture, we are blaspheming the word of God. Now, why, you may ask, how does this connect to blasphemy? This is all about headship and authority structure. I know I talk a lot about this, but I'm going to break it down for you. It is very important that we have order in the body of Christ, that each member of the body of Christ is performing its appropriate duty and its appropriate function. We have all been made for different things. Yes, within our character, we all have a certain set of character traits and that has a very specific function within the body. But on top of that, we have male and female. There is a difference. They have been designed for two different purposes. And this is what we're going to look at. Male and female. So Jesus, who is Jesus? He is the head of the church. More specifically, in terms of order in the church, he is the head of the man. And the head of the woman is the man. So the man is over his wife. If the wife disobeys her husband, she blasphemes Jesus. She goes over her husband's head and simultaneously she dishonors Jesus who is her husband's head. I'm not innocent. I've disobeyed my husband. I'm not proud of it. I'm ashamed of it. But I've repented and the Lord has forgiven me. If you ever do anything outside the will of your husband, you should treat it as something very serious and seriously repent. It's not complicated. Recognize you've done wrong. Pray. Just one sentence. Ask for forgiveness and you will have it. If you don't, you are showing a complete lack of reverence for God, the Father who has instituted this order within the body. It's about order. The enemy does not have order in his ranks. He is full of chaos and self-seeking. The body of Christ is filled with love, peace, and order. And if we don't obey the Lord and the way he has set it out, we dishonor the Lord. And that is called blasphemy. So back to the intelligence thing. Do you want your husband to be smarter than you? Do you want him to be more intelligent than you? If your answer is yes, you're a wise woman. Because if you admire your husband, there will be romance between you. Admiring your husband is the catalyst for romance. It will spark a fire of love between the two of you because you adore him. And that is what a man really needs from his woman. He needs her to admire him. It's the way God made it. The problem comes in. When as women, as young women, we have been raised or allowed to pursue power. Women are not supposed to pursue power. Eve was tempted with power. The serpent tempted her with power. What did she do? She thought about it and she was like, yeah, sure, thank you. I would like that. Women are not supposed to pursue power because we neglect our feminine role. When we neglect our feminine role, our heart changes. Our desires change. And we start to compete with men and desire what men have. The moment you enter into that competition, you will not have romance in your marriage. You will not have passionate love in your marriage. And you will always be at odds with your husband. The enemy of love in your marriage is the wife desiring to be respected. If you are desiring respect, it means you are pursuing masculine traits you are pursuing a masculine role and you are envious of what men have you need to turn your eyes away, back to the role of womanhood back to the roots of what you were made to be if you are craving the respect that is actually due to your husband you are in rebellion to the very nature god gave you and that is going to cause strife struggle anxiety tension, all sorts of complicated things are going to come up in your marriage and you may not understand why but I'm explaining it to you now so hopefully you can receive this. This rebellion of desiring power, desiring respect as a woman is the same problem Eve succumbed to. Eve was tempted by power and she accepted it 
That is rebellious. It's a lesson to all us women. We repeat the same problem over and over. I mean, I have recently been starting to desire respect. It took me a while to realize what was going on. And that is what I discovered, that I am starting to desire a masculine role you know that that seed of desire is in all of us it's in us because our mother eve had it and she planted it in all our hearts but if we act on it we are responsible it's our sin but there is a way back there is a way back do you believe that god's design and his instructions for women are good for us do you believe that or do you think that you know better than your own creator what is good for you as Eve thought. Return back to the design God intended for you, even if you don't understand it. Just trust. That is what faith is. Just trust. Trust that doing what God says will produce good fruit. So how do you do this? You need to flip the cards a bit. Think about the intellect of your husband. Think about traits about his mental capacity to admire and don't make stuff up if you can't see it you need to pray and ask the lord to take the, the shells off your eyes so that you can see it because it's there god made him he made him to be your head if you're not seeing it there's there's a twig or a log in your eye and you're not seeing it the lord can help you to see it pray to him and you will it's a wonderful journey it's not a difficult thing it's a wonderful journey it will Bring a lot of health and joy and peace into you, into your life, into your home. Take it simply, step by step. This is not a heavy burden of hours of study and praying. It's simple. Seek these things. Ask the Lord simply and you will receive. If need be, you can go into fasting. If you think there's something really holding you back, um, some root of bitterness, some pride, that is preventing you from admiring your husband and recognizing he is intellectually superior to you. It's not a bad thing to think of your husband as your intellectual superior. It's going to be so good for your marriage. You want to be led by someone you can trust and someone who is gifted with wisdom and understanding. Why, would, why else would you want to be led? If you are better at all these things, why are you even married? You, you can do just fine without him. Bride of Christ cannot do just fine without Christ. In the same way, a wife cannot do just fine without her husband. She needs him. She needs his guidance and his teaching, his correction. He's pointing her in the right path. And for her to submit herself to him and to recognize his authority. So do this now. Don't delay. If you must fast, have a fast you can do it quietly. You don't have to tell anyone about it. Pray to the Lord that he will open your eyes so that you can respect your husband. I think this is a really core issue for a lot of women because we like to think we're knowledgeable and experienced, especially in the culture that we've been raised, where we are being told to, to become these mature people and we have all these self-help books and we're told to travel and to marry older so that we can, you know, be these wonderful wise woman by the time we marry we just can't respect our husbands anymore because we think we're so wonderfully wise and mature we want our husbands to respect us it's all backwards now let us go back to how it's meant to be you don't have to understand it just obey blessed are those who believe without seeing if you enjoyed this video and you're new here please leave a comment below and like my video also remember to subscribe and you will know about all my new videos you can even hit the little bell and you'll be notified every time i upload i upload every monday i'm really enjoying this process of just sharing my journey through marriage a um, little snippets of wisdom as I go. I truly believe that women who walk in humility and are willing to be changed through Jesus, through prayer, we, we have direct access to the Lord to ask Him in prayer for anything we need, absolutely anything. I don't want us to be striving, I want us to be humble before the Lord and having our hearts open to be changed. It is not something we can do. Jesus alone will change our hearts. So that's it, my friends, my lovely, beautiful sisters. 
I love you very much. It is my joy and pleasure to be here for you. You are welcome to message me on any of my social media pages, um, direct message if you want, or comment down below. I will be delighted to interact with you, to learn from you, to get to meet you. May the seeds of the Lord's wisdom grow in your life and bear many fruits.